Okay, we have Shanna here today and she was kind enough to speak to me. Shanna is a mother raising two fine boys. And so I just asked her what subjects, schoolwork wise, she was confident she could help her sons with. What were they again? Um, English and science, definitely not math, but yes, uh, anything but math. <laughs> okay, so if you were speaking to a mother based off of just experiences you've had during COVID, what advice could you give her as far as schooling or helping your sons do the best that they can? I think that, you know, depending on the age, obviously, but I think that you have to have an open line of communication. Um, with my oldest, who is 13, well, he's 14 now, um, I would take breaks, because I'm working at home too, so I would take breaks and go in and check on him and find out, like, what was on his agenda, what homework he had, and ask him if there was anything that I could help him with. Um, a lot of times, he said he didn't need help, so... I just made sure that he was turning in his work. And I, so I think communication is huge um, and frequent breaks are hey. also important, um, especially for the kids. You know, they're not geared to, to go to school online. They're used to being in, in school. And I don't think that, um, I don't think they're old enough to be doing online school, right? So it's an adjustment period, I feel like. So I think frequent breaks are important and um, grace, lots and lots of grace for yourself, for the teacher and for the kids. Okay, can you give me, if you, if you can, an example of you showing grace to the teacher? Cause that, that, that struck me as interesting you'd say that. Um, okay, so, you know, the first three weeks, um, for example, my sons were just, everybody was doing online school. After the three weeks, they allowed people who wanted to have their children come back to school, um, back in school. So the teachers were managing online students and then they, they had their face-to-face -face classes. So these teachers who are already strained um, are now teaching, I don't even know how many classes, but they have their online students and then they have their face-to-face -face students. So um, my son wasn't doing well in math and I'm trying to teach him to, to fish, right? To, to take care of himself. So I had him call the school to try to get in touch with the teacher. Well, I saw the teacher out here and I explained, you know, I was like, I made Memphis call the school and he was like, oh, don't have him do that. Just have him email me. And I, so I, I knew that he was busy, but of course, like I'm in, used to instant gratification with emails. Like, you know, okay. you need to I take care of this. And I had to, I had to get used to the fact that, you know, they had their face to face and they would have to deal with online. So I, Memphis may not have gotten a response till the next day, you know, and that was an adjustment. So I had to extend grace to them and then to him for not being able to do his work like right away. Okay. Um, because it's just impossible. They can't do it. You know, okay. I think that's awesome. I think, cause I have not heard that. I've heard the aspects from speaking to different mothers about needing the breaks because the hardest part for a lot of mothers has been getting the young children or younger adults, teenagers to actually sit there and pay attention yes. for a time period. And so yeah. in the midst of that, we know that you're working, they're doing school, you're extending grace, what has been one good thing you could say from all of that wrapped up? No, there's a lot of pressure. No, there's yeah. different situations. But is there one good thing that has occurred or a particular moment that you shared with your boys just because of the current climate and situation you're facing? Just, um, you know, hard at times, but just being able to be around them this much more because norm normally it was they would go off to school and I'm at work all day and then I would get home and but I'm I was able to interact with them all day long for long periods of time and you know I never I always thought I wanted to be a stay-at-home mom but I like working okay. um but kind of gave me the best of both worlds and I would have never had that had it not been for what's going on so it was a blessing and a curse you know it's stressful but I got to see my baby <laughs> work what has been work like for you during covid 
with everything you have going on. Because not only do I know that it requires a bunch of energy, but I'm just amazed really with the mothers who are raising their children, they still have a job to do. And oftentimes employers just want, look, I'm worried about the bottom line. So what has that been like for you? I am very blessed. I, um, the company that I work for has been amazing and they've been amazing from the get-go. And this is a job that I prayed for, gosh, for probably about nine months. I had applied for another job with them and I didn't get it, but I, right before COVID hit, I finally got my job and they, and so gracious. Um, when toilet paper was scarce, they bought toilet paper and told us to come get some from the office. It's just things like that. But they, they set us up to work from home. I'm working completely from home. Um, I still have things I have to do, you know, and it's, you know, it can be stressful with that stress I put on myself. My employer has been so supportive and they want to take everything slow as far as coming back to the office because they're, they want to keep us safe. So I know not everybody is that blessed, but um, the, it's it's huge for me to be able to say that. Um, I'm very blessed with my job. Okay. If you were giving someone advice who's working from home, what do you think is sound wisdom for them to be able to contribute to the company that they work for? Meaning we know that these conditions exist. But right. what can you as an employee do other than just your job or if it's just your job that would perhaps add to the company? Because so many people are looking at, I'm barely making it or I'm just happy to do this. Or, I have to worry about this. I have to worry about that. Well, I believe that you can do more than that. But right. you're in a better position to tell me, is there something that you could offer? Hey, you might want to do this or add this. or Because like from teachers, what I got is... You had teachers who basically at first, when the students went back to school, they were face-to-face -face teachers. They had students in a classroom. Right. The other teachers only did it virtually. And what had happened, there was a little wedge that took place. And so one thing that I encouraged one of the teachers to do, when you have your break, go down and check on the virtual teachers to just let them know, you know, hey, we're still in this together. So that was just something that I said for teachers. Yeah, no. Um, so I think I think this is what you're asking, but like for, you know, when I'm caught up on my work, which is rarely, but I, I try to, <laughs> I try to let my you know, my teammates know if there's something that I can do. Um, we actually, one of our teammates had a family emergency and she was out for a week. So I took over some of her accounts to try to help. You know, I wasn't asked to do that, but we're all in this together and we have, you have to have that mindset. So um, I think just, you know, trying to make yourself available to help and it's, it's not always easy and you may not always be able to, but um, if you're willing to do it, you, you know, just, even if it's 15 minutes to just let them know that you're there to help. Um, I think that, that speaks volumes to your teammates and your boss. Okay. No, that's great. That, yeah. that, that's awesome. Well, one thing that I try to do because I've been asking you questions, is there a question or questions that maybe you want to ask me? Um, so, well, you seem to relax then. I'm talking about it. I already thought, no, I thought you were relaxed, but now you were like, you went from, yeah, shit. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. how, how do you start your day every morning? Like, what is your ritual in the morning? Okay. My first day, first thing I do is when my eyes open and I'm conscious in bed, I sing a song to God. Oh, and the, re that. the reason that I do that about a month ago, I just had a lot going on in my mind. Just a lot of decisions, a lot of things. And I was like, God, I know that the life that you have for me, I'm not supposed to be stressing. And so before it reaches stress, can you give me an answer? And the only thing I felt the impression in my heart was sing to me at the first part of the day. And at the end of the day, sing to me. And all I can tell you is, I still had to make decisions. I still had different circumstances I had to deal with. But since I've been obedient in that area, 
it is work for me. And so what I'll do is I'll sing that song, then I roll over on my knees, I put on my spiritual armor, and then I'm off with my day. I like that. I'm gonna have to remember that, the spiritual armor for sure. Okay, and the reason I said that, I, I once did that as a personal experiment, literally, because when Paul says in the Bible to put on the whole armor of God, there are people who, in my opinion, sometimes they take that too far. Right. You know, whereas they're like living in this dream world. They're like, uh, for lack of a better word, they're in a virtual world where they're like, hey, and I'm like, God, you know. But what I realized when I looked at that word put on, it wasn't literally that I have to imagine that I have spiritual armor on, but it meant that I need to conscientiously, the helmet of salvation, right. breastplate of righteousness, you know, sandals of peace, sword, which is your word, shield of faith. When I consciously realize when I go through something, like say someone says something really rude to me, right? I took it as rude, regardless if they meant it or not. And I'm trying to deal with it or I'm dealing with it, but I want to deal with it well, I'll say, okay, I've got a shield of faith. What does that mean in this set of circumstances? I have to believe that a soft answer is going to turn away wrath rather than make a smart comment just to get back at them. And so I'm actualizing <clears throat> those things and it works for me. That's awesome. I love that. Okay. Well, I really, honestly, I really, and that's one reason I'm doing like what I'm doing now, the interviews, because I really believe that God gives us everyday answers. It's just, do we choose to accept them? Yeah. Because here's the other part of it. Every day we're going to go through something. Every day we're going to face something. And whether we made the right decision or wrong decision, if that decision did not lead to physical death, we're going to deal with it. So why not deal with it according to the word of God? We're going to deal with it anyway. Right. So I can allow my emotions to be the authority and deal with it. I can allow friends or family to be the authority that deals with it in my life. I can allow self to be the authority. But if I choose to allow God's word step by step, that's not only work for me, that is actually the only way I have sanity, I have peace, and I have any, any form of values. God's yeah. word. I agree. I know it's, it's hard. I know it's, I know that's what I'm supposed to do. I'm working okay. on it. Okay. So let's do this. You know, it's what you're supposed to do. <clears throat> so there seems to be a little bridge of supposed to and actualize. And the only yeah. thing I'll share with you, instead of focusing, and I'm just throwing a number out, instead of focusing on the nine things I didn't get right, I'm saying celebrate that one. Okay, here's the thing. That. At the end of the day, man, I, I can point out 10 things I did wrong, bad decision, bad choice with the boys, bad, bad attitude. I don't, I don't understand. Yeah. So you're allowing that, you're allowing that to be the balance that doesn't have to be the balance what are you saying right. so i'm saying i can get nine things wrong and choose at the end of the day man i did that right i i i shared my faith with somebody today thank you god and go to sleep because you yeah. worry you worrying about the nine does not go back and change it right yeah so you know, it's a choice. You know, I, I constantly encourage people. It's a choice. Being angry and upset is a choice. Well, you don't understand what happened. No, no, no. I'm trying to say, I don't have to understand what happened, but I understand you have a choice how you feel about it, how much you think about it. Because here's the other side. Let's say you were having a great day. You and the boys were having a fabulous day. And from the morning you woke up, all the way until you got a phone call at 5 p.m. Everything that could go right goes right. You have a bad exchange on the phone at 5 p.m. At 10 or 11 p.m., 
What do most people think about? The nine good things throughout the day mm. or that one bad? I'm just asking. <clears throat> the one so bad. I, so I'm proving that my equation is not based on wishful thinking. My equation is to prove a point that we make choices. And a yeah. lot of times because we're so self-condemning or we question our worth by what we do, we choose to focus on when we miss the mark. Right. Yeah. It's not approval. I'm not, oh, well, you're saying don't get better. I'm not saying don't get better. I'm saying don't focus on it. Address right. it. Acknowledge it. Focus on this one. Right. I was at a men's, uh, if, if I can share this with you, I was at a <laughs> men's study Wednesday and the scripture is found in, in Ecclesiastes, if, if, if I can try to look it up. And basically what it means is if you take a dead fly and put it in a big bottle of perfume over a period of time, what's going to happen? Is the perfume going to overwhelm that stench or aroma of the fly? Or mm -hmm. eventually is that one little fly in that big perfume bottle going to contaminate that bottle and eventually that aroma is going to be sour. Yes. That, part. So if that one fly can turn something so sweet smelling into something sour. I believe that that one celebration, that one thought, that one thing that you did right can permeate everything else. True. And some good can come up out of it. That's I my like, belief. I like that. I, okay. It's, Makes perfect sense. Okay. Okay. Any more questions? Um, I know you. I know you're limited at time, but I'm. I'm give this opportunity. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, that, I'm good. Okay. Do you have time for one more question? Yeah. Okay. Well, at the beginning, before we did the interview, Shan had told me that it was going to be hard to talk, and I had the <laughs> utmost confidence after meeting her at church that. Not that she could talk, but that she had a lot of good things to say. And so the question that I'm posing to you, why do people sometimes doubt how much they bring to the table? I think <clears throat> it can be from past experiences and then, um, you know, and then just kind of a trickle down effect, negative self self-talk. And it's a vicious cycle. That's probably why. I mean, I for me, I know that's why. Okay. Okay. So. Well, in closing, you did an awesome job. Thank you. And I know that some things that were said here are going to help some people. I thank you for your time. Thank and you. And everything's going to be okay. I know. <laughs> <laughs>